The world has been on a search for the tomb of one of history's legendary warriors. 800 years later, it looks like the puzzle has finally been solved. Join us in today's video as we put the pieces of this puzzle together. The exact location of Genghis Khan's burial place, who died in August 1227, remained a mystery for centuries despite extensive research and speculation. What is however close to that is the Genghis Khan mausoleum in modern day Inner Mongolia serves as a tribute to the legendary conqueror, but it is not his actual burial site. Before we delve into the main topic, one might ask, who is Genghis Khan? Genghis Khan was a brilliant warrior and ruler who, from humble beginnings, united all the nomadic tribes of Mongolia under his rule and established a strictly disciplined military state. He then turned his attention to the settled civilizations beyond the borders of his nomadic empire and launched a series of plundering and conquering campaigns that eventually carried the Mongol armies to the Adriatic Sea in the west and the Pacific coast of China in the east, leading to the creation of the vast Mongol Empire. The Mongols destroyed a lot when they invaded other countries. This is why many historians have written about the destruction they have caused. An Arab historian was so horrified by the Mongols that he wrote about them openly. A 13th century historian named Matthew Paris wrote about the Mongols from afar, based on what he had heard from others. He called them a detestable nation of Satan that poured out like devils from Tartarus so that they are rightly called the Tartars. He was making a joke about the word Tartarus, which means hell in the name of a nomadic tribe called the Tatars. But his words also show how scared people were of the Mongols. Genghis Khan was the leader of the Mongols and the one who organized their armies. He was a genius, and he was responsible for their success. So even though the generals often acted on their own, far away from him, he still had to share the blame for the destruction that the Mongols caused. It would be wrong to think that the Mongol invasions were just random acts of violence by savage nomads. They weren't caused by a drought that made the nomads look for new places to graze their animals, and they weren't unique either. Genghis Khan was not the first, nor the last conqueror to come out of the steppe and attack the settled lands around it. His invasions were just bigger and more successful than those other leaders. They also affected more people, because the Mongols invaded a larger part of Eurasia and attacked a wider variety of societies. Two societies, the nomads of the steppe and the settled peoples of China, were in constant contact despite their mutual hostility and opposed ways of life. The nomads needed the staple products and luxuries of the south, which they could obtain through trade, taxation, or raids. The Chinese needed the products of the steppe to a lesser extent, but they could not ignore the threat posed by the nomadic barbarians and were constantly preoccupied with resisting their encroachment. A strong Chinese dynasty, such as the 17th century Manchu dynasty, could extend its military power directly all over Inner Asia. But at other times, the Chinese had to resort to diplomacy to play off one nomadic tribe against another, transferring their support and juggling alliances to prevent any one tribe from becoming too powerful. China's dynastic cycle of strength and weakness was mirrored by a parallel cycle of unity and fragmentation among the nomadic peoples of the steppe. At the height of their power, a nomadic tribe led by a determined figure could subjugate rival tribes and, if China was concurrently experiencing weakness, extend their dominion beyond the steppe's borders. However, this expansion of nomadic power over the incompatible, sedentary culture of the south ultimately led to its downfall. The nomads lost their traditional advantage, their lightning mobility that required minimal supplies and fodder, and were absorbed by the Chinese they had conquered. The cycle would then repeat, a powerful China would re-emerge, while disarray and petty feuds among ephemeral chieftains would become the new pattern of life among the nomads. The history of the Mongol conquest perfectly illustrates this analysis, and it is against this backdrop of political contrasts and tensions that the life of Genghis Khan must be assessed. His campaigns were not an inexplicable natural disaster, or even a divine decree, but rather the result of a set of circumstances manipulated by a soldier of ambition, determination, and genius. 
He found his tribal world ripe for unification at a time when China and other settled states were, for various reasons, simultaneously in decline, and he seized the opportunity. Genghis Khan was that great legendary warrior and leader. How is it that such a man died and no one knew where he was laid for about eight centuries? Was there an attempt to locate his burial site? Genghis Khan's last wish was to be buried in a secret location. To ensure his privacy, his burial party was said to have killed anyone they met on their way to the tomb, including the builders of the monument. And to prevent anyone from following them, they took their own lives. Whether this tale is true or not remains a mystery, but the location of Genghis Khan's tomb remained unknown for nearly 800 years after his death. For hundreds of years, many people have been trying to find the tomb of Genghis Khan. This includes archaeologists who dug up his palace and a lawyer from Chicago who led an expedition to 60 unopened tombs in the Mongol warlord's territory. People sought the tombs for two reasons, to learn more about history and to find treasure. According to Mongolia Today, Genghis Khan was buried with incredible treasures from all over his vast empire. Researchers have made efforts even as far as using new and innovative methods to search for the tomb. They are scanning vast areas of Mongolia's sparsely populated and hilly terrain from space. Researchers from the University of California at San Diego, led by Albert Yumin Lin, use satellite imagery and crowdsourcing to search for the tomb of Genghis Khan. They created a virtual exploration system that allows volunteers from around the world to help them search for the tomb. The researchers have received thousands of responses from volunteers all over the world and have identified 55 potential archaeological anomalies that they will investigate further. The search for Genghis Khan's tomb has been unsuccessful until recently. However, the quest for Khan's tomb was complicated by several factors unique to this specific search. As Ben Richmond from Motherboard explained, Mongolians are deeply opposed to archaeologists disturbing their sites. The location where many believe Khan is buried is one of the country's most sacred places. It is called Ik Kurik, which literally translates to the Great Taboo, but is often referred to as the Forbidden Zone by outsiders. Lin, who has been described as obsessed with finding Genghis Khan's tomb, also searched the Forbidden Zone but found nothing. As National Geographic reported, the team pushed its way through the thick, boar-infested brush surrounding it and clambered to the top. However, a test probe revealed that the hill was just a hill. Lin's crowdsourcing study had yielded a wealth of potential sites for exploration in the quest for Genghis Khan's tomb. However, navigating Mongolia's cultural sensitivities surrounding excavation poses a significant challenge. Mongolians strongly oppose any disturbance of graves or even the act of wandering around graveyards, Mongolia Today reported. According to ancient tradition, burial sites are considered sacred and off limits. But of course, the search was never going to end if it wasn't discovered. Alas, in August 2022, after 800 years of exploration by archaeologists, scientists, adventurers, and robbers, Genghis Khan's burial site was discovered. Building a road near the Anan River in Kenti province of Mongolia, construction workers discovered a mass grave of human corpses lying on stone structure. Forensic experts and archaeologists have confirmed it is a Mongolian royal tomb from the 13th century and concluded that the body under the stone slab belonged to a man between 60 and 75 years who had died between 1215 and 1235 CE. The age, date, location, and the opulence of the site confirmed that the tomb did actually belong to Genghis Khan. The 68 skeletons found on the stone structure were probably the slaves who had built the tomb and had been massacred to keep the site secret. Inside the tomb were a tall male and 16 female skeletons. The women were probably concubines and wives killed to go with the warlord into the afterlife. Scattered across the tomb were gold and silver artifacts and thousands of coins. The rock dome had been buried under the Yanan River for centuries. Since the river had changed its course in the 18th century, the contents of the tomb were badly deteriorated. Does this discovery diffuse the mystery built around it? What do you think? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. We can't wait to read your thoughts.
Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more amazing content.